Hello everyone. Once again, welcome to PM Networking. Hope you all are doing great. Guys, one of my paid students shared this topology with me and told me to configure everything from a scratch. So today we are going to configure this topology from the scratch. And before starting the configuration, let me tell you what we are going to configure in this topology. As you can see, in this topology, we have two sides. Let's say this is side one. This is side one. Let's say this side is in Delhi. And this is, let's say, headquarter or main branch. And this is side two branch office in different location let's say this is in delhi and this is in mumbai in different location mumbai in different location at both sides are connected together with the help of internet with the help of internet this is my internet router and on internet router you can see i have one loopback 8.8.8 okay and these two sides should be able to access internet this is the first requirement means these user these pc should be able to access internet and here also we have some end devices those end devices should be able to access internet the next configuration is side 2 means these user these pc should be able to access this server like here you can see in delhi location we have one http server one tftp server one ftp server are there like this there are multiple server multiple services are there right in this side in headquarter so branch offices user should be able to access this server so we will configure one tunnel gre tunnel between uh, you know uh, edge router to edge router like this is edge router of Mumbai location and this is edge router of Delhi location right between these two edge router we will configure GRE tunnel on GRE tunnel we will configure this network and if I will talk about the configuration from beginning from the scratch so you can see first of all we need to configure VLAN over here in this side in side 2 we have three layer this is core layer this is distribution layer and this is access layer on access layer switch we will configure vlans like here on switch number one vlan uh, there are some user in vlan 10 on switch number two there are some user in vlan 20 here we have some user in vlan 30 and on distribution layer switch we will configure spi spi for vlan 10 20 and 30 you can see for spi svi for vlan 10 we are going to use network 192.168.10.0 for SVI, SVI for VLAN 20, we are going to use this subnet 20.0 and SVI for VLAN 30, we are going to use 30.0 slash 24 subnet. Okay, so we will configure one, you know, IP address on the virtual interface of VLAN 10, 20 and 30 on both switch. After that, we will configure HSRP so that my switch one, this switch should be the active switch and this switch should be the standby switch. Okay, and then to reachability between distribution layer and code layer, we will configure OSPF over here. OSPF to make reachability between distribution layer and core layer. After that, on edge router, we will configure NAT, network address translation, PAT, right? So that these end devices can access internet. And same configuration is required in headquarter also, over here also in Delhi location also. Here on this order we will configure NAT. Here let's say VLAN is not required. If you wish, you can configure the VLAN. But here we have only two layer: co access layer and distribution layer. You can say core layer and access layer. We don't have distribution layer here. You can design this this top this side. You know also in three layer: core layer, distribution layer, and access layer. But uh, the main motive of this topology configuration is to configure VPN. VPN uh, between side 1 and side 2 and configuring NAT and configuring HSRP OSPF this is completely like like uh, real time configuration so that you can understand how in real time we are using internet or how our two sides are connected uh, together through internet in real time okay so this this is uh, going to be configuration you can see between my this router router number one and isp internet router we are using uh subnet 100.1.1.0 slash 30 so here ip address is 100.1.1.1 here ip address is 100.1.1.2 and between i internet router and uh, this router router 0 
we are using this submit 101.0.0.0 slash 30 so here ip address is 101.1.1.2 here ip address is 101.1.1.1 now let's begin the configuration guys i am going to start the configuration from access layer switch first of all i am going to configure vlan on this switch and link between switches like link between access layer switch and distribution layer switch must be configured as trunk so we are going to configure this link as trunk and vlan on access layer switch so let me access first access layer switch you will understand the configuration because i am going to configure everything step by step i will start the configuration from access layer switch first i will configure this this access layer switch then i will configure distribution layer switch then i will configure this router then i will configure routing protocol hsrp then we will configure NAT and VPN. Okay. Before that, let me check PC have IP address or not. If PC need IP address, so first of all, let me configure the IP on PC. Okay. So PC1 belongs to VLAN 10. So you can see PC1 have IP address 192.168.10.10. Submit mask is 255.255.255.0. And gateway is 192.168.10.10. 100 guys this is the virtual ip address let me tell you first here what ip address i am going to configure here for vlan 10 for vlan 10 i am going to configure 192.168.10.1 let's say and for vlan 20 for vlan 20 let's say we are going to configure 192.168.20.1 and for vlan 30 we are going to configure let's say 192.168.1.130.1 uh, these are the ip configuration on let's say this switch this is for vlan 30 for vlan 30 okay so for vlan 10 we have this ip address on this switch for vlan 20 we have this ip address for vlan 30 we have this ip address in the same way on switch number two also we need to configure one ip address for all uh, svi interface so let's say for vlan 10 interface here ip address is for vlan 10 ip address is 192.168.10.2 and then for vlan 20 let's say ip address over here is 192.168.20.20.2 and for vlan 30 for vlan 30 let's say ip address is 192.168.30.2 okay so these are the ip configuration on switch number two okay and after that our virtual ip address is our virtual ip address is hsrp virtual ip address is 192.168. Uh, let's say 10.100 this is my virtual ip address let me write here virtual virtual ip equals this one okay this is virtual IP address. So first of all, let me configure these things. Okay, so let me start the configuration from PC. Here you can see IP address is correct, right? IP address is 10.10 uh, .10 here. On PC number two also, I am going to configure one IP address. Let me check here IP is not configured. So 192.168. This PC also belongs to VLAN 10. So 10. Dot, let's say 20. Submit mask is this one. Gateway is 192.168.10.100. Virtual IP address. After that to PC3. Here to PC3 also I can configure one IP address. 192.168. This PC belongs to VLAN 20. So here I am going to configure 20.10 let's say. And gateway is 192.168.20. Uh, 20. Dot, 20 dot let's say 100 this is virtual ip address for vlan 20 this is for vlan 10 for vlan 20 192.168.20.100 and for vlan 30 192.168.30.30.100 these are the virtual ip configuration okay so on pc number two here i have defined this ip address as a gateway 192.168.20.100 on this pc i am going to define ip this PC also belongs to VLAN 20, so 192.168.20. Let's say 20, and gateway is 192.168.20.100, and then PC5. PC5 belongs to VLAN 30, so here we are going to configure 192.168.30.10. Let's say to 192.168.30.100 is gateway IP address, and finally PC number six. So PC number six IP address is let's say. 
192.168.30.20 and 192.168.30.100 is the gateway done this is the ip configuration on pc now let me configure access layer switches so first of all i am going to access this switch switch number one here as you know we need vlan 10 and we, we need to assign two interfaces in vlan 10 interface range first ethernet 0 slash 3 and 0 slash 4 0 slash 3 is connected with PC 1 0 slash 4 is connected with PC 2 I am going to say switch port mode access switch port mode access and then switch port access VLAN 10 VLAN 10 and now we can verify also so VLAN brief here you can see uh, VLAN 10 is there and there are two interfaces in VLAN 10 first ethernet 0 slash 3 and 0 slash 4 then we need to configure access layer switch 2 so let me access this switch access layer 2 access layer switch 2 and here also here we need to put these two interface fast ethernet 0 slash 3 and 4 in vlan 20 so interface range fast ethernet 0 slash 3 to 4 and say switch port mode access and switch port access vlan 20 done now here also we can verify so vlan brief i am not configuring you know link between uh, distribution layer and access layer switch for now here i have only configured vlan 20 and i have assigned these two interface in vlan 20 then access layer switch 3 so let me access access layer switch 3 and here i am going to configure again these two interface 0 slash 3 and 4 in VLAN 30 so interface range F 0 slash 3 to 4 and say switch port access VLAN 30 switch port access VLAN 30 done I have configured the VLAN here also we can verify so VLAN brief you can see VLAN 30 is there and two interfaces are there fine now I am going to access dis distribution layer switch first let me access distribution layer switch 1 this switch see all the link of distribution layer switch 1 connected to access layer switch should be trunk link so i am going to configure these port like 0 slash 2 0 slash 3 0 slash 4 0 slash 2 0 slash 3 and 0 slash 4 is connected with access layer switch 0 slash 2 is connected with switch 1 0 slash 3 is connected with switch 2 and 0 slash 4 is connected with switch 3 so i am going to configure these port as dynamic desirable so that these ports will become trunk port okay for now if you will verify so interface and trunk so you can see we don't have any trunk interface here so let me configure trunk link interface range f 0 slash 2 to 4 0 slash 2 to 4 3 4 okay yes and here i am going to say switch port mode dynamic desirable right this is dtp configuration and after running this command you can verify so interface trunk and now you can see 0 slash 3 0 slash 2 0 slash 3 and 0 slash 4 is configured as trunk right mode is dynamic desirable okay in the same way on switch number on dis distribution layer switch 2 also we need to configure these port like 2 3 and 4 as dynamic desirable so let me access distribution layer switch 2 and here also i am going to say first no to this and then config t interface range f 0 slash 2 to 4 and say switch port mode dynamic desirable right here also we can verify so interface trunk so you can see 0 slash 2 3 4 is configured as now trunk okay so trunk configuration is done now we are going to create svi on distribution layer switch so first of all let me create svi on distribution layer switch one so this is a console of distribution layer switch one here i am going to say interface vlan 10 first of all vlan 10 then vlan 20 then vlan 30 i have created three vlan over here after that interface vlan 10 and say ip address ip address to this vlan is 192.168.10.1 as i told you 255.255.255.0 here i have configured this ip address for vlan 10 interface and then interface vlan 20 and then ip 
address ip address over here 192.168.20.1 as you can see here i have mentioned the ip address for sbi interfaces okay 20.1.255.255.255.0 and then interface vlan 30 interface vlan 30 and then ip address is 192.168.30.1 255.255.255.0 done here we can verify the ip configuration i can maximize this console and here i can run so ip interface brief so you can see here we have ip address on vlan 10 interface vlan 20 interface and vlan 30 interface right so on these three virtual interface i have assigned the ip address now we need to do same thing on distribution layer switch 2 also so let me access distribution layer switch 2 here also i am going to configure uh, svi interface interface vlan 10 and before that we need to create vlan vlan 10 exit vlan 20 exit vlan 30 exit and then interface vlan 10 and here for vlan 10 ip address will be 192.168.10.2 this side I am configuring to so say IP address IP address 192.168.10.2255.255.255.0 and 255.255.255.0 and then I interface VLAN 20 20 and this time here IP address will be 192.168.20.2 255.255.255.0 and interface vlan 30 here ip address is 192 ip address is 192.168.30.2 255.255.255.0 done here also we can verify the ip configuration by running command show ip interface brief and if you will maximize it here you can see we have ip address on these three interfaces interface vlan 10 20 and 30 after that we can do one thing we can verify the connectivity like between distribution layer switch 1 and distribution layer switch 2 so from distribution layer switch 2 i am going to ping let's say the svi of vlan 10 on switch 1 so ip address of vlan 10 interface on switch 1 is 192.168.10.1 so i am going to ping that ip address from distribution layer switch 2 let me check the connectivity okay and guys for better understanding what we can do here we can configure the host name also let's say here host name is distribution layer switch 2 and on this switch i am going to configure host name distribution layer switch 1 let's say host name distribution layer switch one done so from distribution layer switch one i am going to check connectivity ping 192.168.10.2 which is the svi interface uh, on switch number two and then for vlan 20 i am going to ping 192.168.20.2 yes reachability is there right then ping 192.168.30.2 you guys can configure this topology by yourself and you should configure it then only you will understand the all configuration correctly and this is real time scenario completely so this is very useful right now okay we have configured the ip addresses we have created the svi on this distribution layer switch now next thing is configuring hsrp configuring hsrp and in hsrp as you can see my virtual ip address should be 192.168.10.100 for vlan 10 user my virtual ip address for vlan 20 user should be 192.168.20.100 and for vlan 30 user i uh, gateway should be 192.168.30.100 right so and switch 1 should be the active switch and switch 2 should be the standby switch so what we can do here we can increase the priority of uh, hsrp by default priority is 100 so here we can set priority 110 okay so now let me begin the configuration of hsrp here so first of all here let me access uh distribution layer switch one and now here i am going to say interface vlan 10 interface vlan 10 and then extend by virtual ip address extend by then group number after that we can set priority here first priority let's say 110 
100 and 10 and extend by 10 we can enable preemption also preempt print and then what we can say ip address sorry extend by extend by ip address ip only ip and then ip address virtual ip 192.168.1.10. sorry 100 this is the virtual IP address. We need to do same thing on distribution layer switch 2 also. So interface VLAN 10 here also interface VLAN 10 and then extend by let's say group number 10 print and here we are not going to set extend by IP 192.168.10.100 here uh, I have not configured priority so by default priority is there and now if you will check so extend by so extend by so extend by this switch is is in listening state now and virtual IP address is 192.168.10.100 that is fine by default priority is 100 okay and it is waiting now you can see this switch is in extend by this switch is in extend by and if you will check switch 1 so switch 1 is you can see active switch fine switch 1 is active switch and we need to do same thing for uh, VLAN 20 and for VLAN 30 also. So let me configure uh, HSRP for VLAN 20 interface VLAN 20 and then say extend by priority 110 and then extend sorry extend by 10 group number 10 or we can ignore it also in packet share extend by group number 10 priority this one extend by priority 10 prim preemption and then extend by IP 192.168.20.100 is the virtual IP address for VLAN 20. Let me configure same thing on switch number 2 also distribution layer switch 2 interface VLAN 20 and here I am going to I am not going to configure priority extend by 10 we can enable preemption and then extend by IP 192.168.20.100. And wait for some time after some time now if you will check so extend by so extend by you can see for VLAN 10 this switch is extend by and for VLAN 20 state is now listening right so wait for some time after some time again uh, the, this switch will become a standby for VLAN 20 also switch 1 will become active for VLAN 20 for VLAN 10 for VLAN 30 for all VLAN you can see here HSRP VLAN 20 is speak to standby so now this switch is standby for VLAN 10 for VLAN 20 and for VLAN 30 also this switch will be standby and if you want to configure let's say that this switch should be you know uh, active for VLAN 30 so for VLAN 30 you can increase priority over here but in my scenario uh, for all VLANs this switch should be the active switch switch 1 should be the active switch so that's why we are configuring higher priority on switch number 1 okay now let me configure same thing for VLAN 30 interface VLAN 30 and then say extend by group number 10 first of all preemption extend by group number 10 and priority here also let me set 110 and extend by extend by 10 IP 192.168.30.100 this this that's it now let me configure distribution layer switch 2 here also we need to configure same thing interface vlan 30 extend by group number 10 let's say print and then extend by group number 10 and say ip 192.168.30.100 that's it and wait for some time after some time you will see this switch will become a standby for VLAN 30 also and this switch on switch number one if you will run so standby command so standby so standby so you can see for VLAN 10 this switch is active switch for VLAN 20 also this switch is active switch and for VLAN 30 this switch is active for VLAN 30 also this switch is active means for all uh, you know VLAN 10 20 and 30 switch 1 is active switch and switch 2 is a standby switch here you can see the log message fine now hope it is clear to you
now I am going to check the connectivity from PC to their default gateway. PC to their default gateway. Okay, so let me do one thing. From PC number one, I am going to ping the gateway. Ping 192.168.10.100. This is virtual IP address, right? And I am able to ping. I am able to ping. And I am able to ping this gateway, virtual gateway. IP address and uh, switch one is my active switch means all the traffic whenever these PC will forward traffic let's say for internet or for the outside for the other branches all the traffic will go via switch number one co distribution layer switch one okay because distribution layer switch one is my active switch now next configuration is next configuration is configuring uh, the IP addresses between distribution layer and core layer so on switch number one, I am going to configure first IP address here on distribution layer switch one. Let me show you on distribution layer switch one. You can see we need to configure one IP address on fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. 0 slash 1 is connected with core layer, right? Means router number one. So interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. And as you know, this is layer 3 switch, right? So if you want to enable the routing, here on layer 3 switch, you have to run command IP routing first. IP routing this command. And then on interface, fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. To assign IP address on this interface, first of all, you need to run no switch port command. Because by default, all ports of layer 2 or layer 3 switch is switch port. Switch port means layer 2 port. So you have to tell to interfaces that now you are not longer layer 2 port. Now you are going to become layer 3 port and then we can assign IP address here IP address 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot let's say 1 255.255.255.252 because we are using slash 30 to 30 okay so here I have assigned the IP address so we can run no set command also then distribution layer switch 2 I am going to configure one IP address on this interface fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 of distribution layer switch 2 also so let me configure one IP here distribution layer switch 2 interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1 here also I am going to say no switch port and then IP address 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 5 slash so, sorry 255.255.255.252 right so because here we you are able to see the subnet we are using uh, the subnet 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 4 slash 30 between distribution layer switch 1 and core layer means router between router and distribution layer switch 2 we are using this subnet so first IP address is dot 5 I am running first IP address on distribution layer switch and second IP address on router okay and finally then IP routing IP routing IP routing done okay now finally I am going to configure uh, this this router core layer we are going to assign IP addresses first on this router so let me show you the configuration here configuration is easy guys IP configuration first first of all we need to configure IP like on fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 say no shutdown and IP address here I am going to say IP address 10.10.10.1 10 uh, is on distribution layer switch 1 so here I am going to configure 2 255.255.255.252 that's it then interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1 here also say no set and IP address is going to become 10.10.10.5 10 10 is on distribution layer switch 2 so here 6 255.255.255.252 done I have configured the IP address on these two interface and finally I am going to configure IP on WAN interface these two are like LAN, LAN interface and serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 is WAN interface here say no set and IP address here I am going to assign IP let's say 100.1.1.1 255.255.255.252 252 now now let me configure IP on internet router also let me access internet router and here also let me assign the IP configuration because on internet router I need to configure IP only okay after that I will close the console of internet router say enable 
कॉन्फ्लिक ट्री इंटरफेस सीरियल जीरो स्लैश टू स्लैश जीरो से नो सट यस एंड आई पी एड्रेस हंड्रेड डॉट वन डॉट वन डॉट टू टू फाइव फाइव डॉट 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 टू फिफ्टी टू ओके आई कैन फिगर द आई पी एड्रेस हियर एंड देन इंटरफेस सीरियल जीरो स्लैश टू स्लैश वन ऑन दिस इंटरफेस ऑल्सो लेट मी एस आइन द आई पी आई पी ओवर हियर इज आई पी ओवर हियर इज हंड्रेड डॉट वन हंड्रेड वन डॉट वन डॉट वन डॉट टू टू फाइव फाइव डॉट टू फाइव फाइव डॉट टू फाइव फाइव डॉट टू फिफ्टी टू एंड देन लेट मी क्रिएट वन लुक बैक हेयर इंटरफेस लुक बैक वन एंड आई पी एड्रेस इज एट डॉट एट डॉट एट डॉट एट टू फाइव फाइव डॉट 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 टू फाइव फाइव ओके आई हैव कॉन्फ़िगर द आईपी एड्रेस ऑन इंटरनेट राउटर सो आईपी इंटरफेस ब्रीफ वी कैन वेरीफाई ऑन इंटरफेस फास्ट इथरनेट जीरो स्लैश जीरो जीरो सॉरी जीरो नोट फास्ट इथरनेट सीरियल जीरो स्लैश टू स्लैश जीरो आई पी एड्रेस दिस वन ओके पोर्ट इज अप एंड ऑन फास्ट इथरनेट जीरो स्लैश टू स्लैश वन आई पी एड्रेस दिस वन एंड वी हैव ऑन लुक बैक एट डॉट एट डॉट एट फाइन लेट मी क्लोज द कॉन्सोल ऑफ इंटरनेट राउटर नाउ The next configuration is we need reachability between distribution layer and code layer. My means router should have uh, these network information, right? One ninety-two network, one four VLAN, ten, twenty, and thirty. So how this distribution layer switch is going to advertise this prefixes to router? For that we are going to configure OSPF here. OSPF routing protocol between distribution layer switch and router. So let me start the configuration. configuring configuration of ospf from distribution layer switch uh, one so on distribution layer one switch one i am going to run command router ospf and then let's say process is one here i can define the router id or we can leave the router id right then we can advertise the network so network one network is 10.10.10.1 0.0.0.0 and area Zero, guys. This command will enable OSPF on fast Ethernet zero slash one because this is IP address of fast Ethernet zero slash one, right? So let me hit enter over here. This command will enable OSPF on this interface. After that, I am I I want to advertise uh, some network in OSPF. So let me advertise those network with the help of network command one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot ten dot zero. This is for VLAN ten zero dot zero dot zero dot two five five. And area zero. This network, and we need to advertise one more network. Ten dot one dot one dot. Sorry, one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot twenty dot zero and zero dot zero dot zero dot two five five area zero. Very good. And one more network. Ten dot one dot one. Sorry, one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot thirty dot zero. One ninety two dot one sixty eight dot thirty dot zero. Right. So here I have advertised this network also in OSPF. Okay, and now here, if you will run this command, so IP OSPF, so IP OSPF interface brief. So you can see OSPF is now enabled on fast Ethernet zero slash zero. OSPF is enabled on VLAN ten uh, interface. OSPF is enabled on VLAN twenty interface. This is IP address of VLAN ten. This is IP address of VLAN twenty. This is IP address of VLAN thirty. Right. So OSPF is enabled on all. Interfaces. Now, finally, what we are going to do? I am going to let's say configure OSPF on router number one. I am going to enable OSPF on these two interface. Let me check that OSPF never see will come up or not. So, first of all, let me configure OSPF on this router. So, router OSPF here also. I am going to say router OSPF process one. Let's say, and the network ten dot network ten dot ten dot ten dot Two is the IP address of fast Ethernet zero slash zero zero dot zero dot zero dot zero and area zero. This command will enable OSPF on fast Ethernet zero slash zero. We are waiting for OSPF neighborship. Let me run one command here to check OSPF neighborship. So IP yes here you can see the log message also OSPF neighbor <coughs> has come up. State is full from loading done. So IP. OSPF neighbor, we can check neighborship also. Yes, who is neighbor? Ten dot one dot one dot one is the neighbor on fast Ethernet zero slash zero interface. Ten dot one dot one dot one is the neighbor on fast Ethernet zero slash zero. And neighbor router ID is 
neighbor router ID is 192.168.30.1 highest IP address okay fine in the same way we need to configure OSPF on this distribution layer switch 2 also right so let me access distribution layer switch 2 and on distribution layer switch 2 also I am going to say router OSPF process number 1 and then network network 10.10.10 .10 .10 here IP address is 5 on fast ethernet 0 slash 1 0 dot 0 dot 0 and area 0 and after that network let's say 192 168 dot 10 dot 0 0 dot 0 dot 255 and area 0 and then we need to advertise 10 uh, 192 dot 168 dot 20 dot 0 20 dot 0 and then we need to advertise 30 dot 0 30.0 dot 30.0 I think I have run one wrong command here this command this command let me remove this command mm, this command say no to this and then 20 is not I think say added 20 yes now you can check so IP OSPF interface brief right so OSPF is enabled on fast ethernet 0 slash 1 VLAN 10 20 and 30 VLAN 10 VLAN 20 VLAN 30 and VLAN 20 okay and now here we will check so IP OSPF neighbor so you can see distribution layer switch switch so uh, to have three neighbor right these are the these are the ip address of VLAN, distribution layer switch one means there is ospf neighborship between switch one and switch two for all vlan for vlan 10 for vlan 20 for vlan 30 for all vlan between switch one and switch two we have one ospf neighborship we don't have any ospf neighborship between distribution layer switch two and this router because i think we have not enabled ospf on this interface of router so let me enable ospf on this interface also again let me access router and interface interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1 and we can say IP OSPF 1 area 0 we can enable OSPF like this also soon OSPF neighborship will come up between uh, distribution layer switch 2 and router also so IP OSPF neighbor yes you can see the log message now this route this router have two neighbor one is distribution layer switch one and one is distribution layer switch two now guys here you can see here we have also ospf neighborship for all vlan for vlan 10 20 and 30 but between distribution layer switch one and distribution layer two switch two we don't need ospf neighborship we don't need OSPF neighbor SIP. So what we can do, we can configure these interface as passive interface. We can configure these interface as a passive interface. And for now, if you will check routing table of this router, let me show you the routing table of the router. Routing table of the, with the router. So IP root. So this router should have you know 192 and 60.10.0 also 20.0 and 30.0 so you can see yes this router have learn 192 168.10.0 from two side from distribution layer switch one and from distribution layer switch two from both switch it have learned this network this network also 20.0 and 30.0 so router have this network information right and now if if you will check distribution layer switch one so IP OSPF neighbor so we need to remove this neighbor right for between distribution layer switch one and distribution layer switch two so here what we can do here we can run simply one command interface VLAN 10 not interface VLAN 10 router OSPF router OSPF router OSPF one process one and then passive interface of vlan 10 then 
पैसिव इंटरफेस विलन ट्वेंटी यू कैन सी नेवर एज गोज डाउन ट्वेंटी एंड देन थर्टी फॉर विलन थर्टी ऑन स्विच नंबर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन लेयर स्विच टू ऑल्सो वी कैन कन्फिगर दिस राउटर ओ एस पी एफ सॉरी राउटर ओ एस पी एफ वन एंड वी कैन से पैसिव इंटरफेस पैसिव इंटरफेस विलन टेन विलन ट्वेंटी एंड विलन थर्टी विलन थर्टी एंड नाउ इफ यू विल चेक ओ एस पी एफ नेबर सी पी एर सो आई पी ओ एस पी एफ नेबर सो नाउ ओनली राउटर इज द नेबर only router is the neighbor this is router id of router highest ip address will become router id right so this is highest ip address on router okay so now only router is neighbor of distribution layer switch 2 and distribution layer switch 1 also here also you can verify so ip ospf neighbor so this time only router is the neighbor fine so everything is fine here we have successfully configured the lan network now finally we are going to configure nat on this router so that this this user can access internet fast okay so let me access router and here i am going to define one default route first towards internet one default route is required here so let me maximize it and here say ip root ip route 0.0.0 0.0.0 dot and next stop is 100.1.1.2 right and now i am going to check that i am able to ping 8.8.8 or not ping 8.8.8.8 so yes you can see i am able to ping 8.8.8 but for now these user the pcs cannot ping 8.8.8 because we have not configured the net so router will not translate the source and if router will not translate the source isp will not have internet router will not have the route for 192168 network so it will drop the reply packet so what i am going to do i am going to configure net here on this router here also let me change host name to r1 r1 okay and uh, finally i access list access list let's say number is 10 permit after that permit any or we can say 192.168.0.0.0.255.255 like this we can configure access control list to match the source okay so router need to translate ip address from this range okay so it will uh, translate the traffic of vlan 10 20 and 30 okay now ip net inside source list number 10 interface serial 0/0/0 and overload this is the net configuration let me hit enter and now what i am going to do i am going to check that this pc is able to ping internet or not ping internet or not ping 8.8.8.8 destination host unreachable wait this pc should be able to ping 8.8.8 yes now i am getting request time out error and okay net configuration is correct let me do one thing from on distribution layer switch 1 let me ping 8.8.8.8 and can i use source command here no in this scenario we cannot use source command but we can see the packet by using simulation mode so let me use simulation mode here and before pinging 8.8.8 let me ping again 8.8.8 yes here is icmp traffic it will forward to switch switch will forward to uh, distribution layer switch and distribution layer switch is dropping let me check what is the problem here on this distribution layer switch i am going to check first let me check the connectivity from default gateway ping 
192.168.10.100 yes i am able to ping my gateway ip address i am able to ping my gateway ip address and uh, arp arp table this is the mac address and i think this mac address is in last it's ac00 right ac00 so interface vlan 10 mac address of this interface is mac address of this interface okay mac address of this interface vlan 10 is this one and vlan 10 user when vlan 10 user will ping wait problem is you can see here pc1 is generating reply when i am pinging 8.8.8 .8 .8 from pc1 pc1 is generating reply 192.168.10.1 is generating this reply reply from 192.168.10.1 actually problem is here you can see on distribution layer switch 1 or distribution layer switch 2 if you will check routing table if distribution layer switch 1 will receive any root so ip root right uh, any packet where destination is 8.8.8 .8 .8. it will check routing table in the routing table route is not available so it will drop the traffic so that's why distribution layer switch 1 is dropping the packet so what we need to do here on router we have one default route towards isp we need to redistribute that default route in ospf so on router simply we need to run one command router ospf process one and say default information originate that's it and now if you will check distribution layer switch routing table here so ip route you can see just wait for some time it will receive one default route now you can see gateway of last resort is gateway of last resort is 10.1.1.2 right there is one default route here external route is there 0.0.0, .0. and in the same way you can see this default route in distribution layer switch 2 also whenever uh, distribution layer 1 switch 1 will fail this switch will become active so this switch should also have one default route so ip route ospf so yes external route is there okay fine and now let me check the pc is able to ping 8.8.8 .8 or not ping 8.8.8 .8 .8 or not so let me ping again and this time it should work ping should work wait request timeout request timeout now what is problem here we can again use simulation mode here we can check access control list so access list in access list 192.168.0.0 ok that is fine here and so ip net translation don't have any translation and so run oh we have not defined inside interface and outside interface here this is problem right so let me say interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and ip net outside and exit interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1 ip net inside and exit interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 ip net inside done and now let me check the connectivity this time i think it should work yes now you can see pc is able to pc1 is able to access internet i am getting the reply packet right it is request timeout yeah now it's working fine okay from pc number 2 also we can check pc2 is also able to ping internet or not so yes pc2 can also access internet yes for uh, vlan 20 user you can verify the connectivity for vlan 20 user vlan 20 user is able to ping 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 or not yes vlan 20 user is also able to 
एक पिंग एट डॉट एट डॉट एट एंड वी लैन थर्टी यूजर येस वी लैन थर्टी यूजर कैन ऑल्सो पिंग इंटरनेट येस फाइन नाउ वट वी आर गोइंग टू डू वी आर गोइंग टू कन्फिगर दिस ब्रांच ऑफिस राइट this branch office first of all again here also we will start the configuration from end devices let me define the ip addresses on server first so on this server let me check the ip here ip is 10.1.1.30 this one is submit mask and default gateway is 10.1.1 fine tftp server ip address yes here tftp server ip address is 10.1.1.20 gateway is this one okay correct ftp server ip address ftp server ip address is also correct 10.1.1.10 now let me configure the router this router here i am going to first configure host name say no and then we can say host name let's say r2 host name r2 and after that as you know interface fast ethernet 0/1 we are going to say this interface to no set and then ip address is 10.1.1.1255.255.255.0 right now you can check http or ftp tftp any these server are able to ping their gateway or not let me check the connectivity to gateway 10.1.1.1 Switch is not in forwarding state. Switch interface is not in forwarding state because of a spanning tree protocol. It will take 30 seconds. And now, if you will check connectivity, you can see ping is working. From TFTP server also, I can check the connectivity. Ping 10.1.1.1. Yes, I am able to ping an FTP server. From this FTP server also, let me ping the gateway. Ping 10.1.1.1. Yes, I am able to ping. Now let me configure this router, this edge router. Interface, fast Ethernet zero slash one. IP NAT inside. Exit interface, CDL zero slash zero slash zero. IP NAT outside. Say no set. And IP address is. 252 and finally i am going to check the connectivity am i able to ping the public ip address of internet router ping 101.1.1.2 yes i am able to ping now let me configure the nat here so access list number 10 say permit and this time my lan network is 10.1.1. let's say 00.0.0.255 and then ip nat inside source list 10 and interface serial 0 by 0 by 0 overload right and ip route one default route is also required ip route 0.0.0 0.0.0 .0 and then next stop is 101.1.1.2 right now let me check the connectivity to 8.8.8 from this router ping 8.8.8 yes i am able to ping 8.8.8 from this router let me check this http server is able to ping 8.8.8 or not ping 8.8.8.8 yes this http server is also able to ping 8.8.8 tftp server ping 8.8.8.8 yes able to ping 8.8.8 and ftp server ping 8.8.8.8 yes all servers are able to access internet now these two branch are able to access internet now we need a reachability between these two sides like from pc1 you cannot ping from pc1 you cannot ping http server if you will ping 10.1.1.30 this ping will not work right you can access only internet not this side this is private whenever you want to make communication between two private private sites over public network you need to create vpn you need to configure vpn so we, here we are going to configure now vpn between two edge routers so let's say start the configuration from this router from r1 on this router i am going to create one tunnel interface tunnel let's say one and then we are going to say tunnel source and tunnel source is nothing but serial 0/0/0 IP address of serial 0/0/0 then tunnel destination 
external destination is 101.1.1.1 remote side public IP and then IP address on this tunnel interface. IP address on this tunnel interface will be 172.16.1.1255.255.255.252. Done. Here we have configured that tunnel interface. So run. You can see the configuration. This is the configuration of tunnel interface. This is the configuration of tunnel interface. In the same way, we need to create one tunnel on router 2. So let me access this router, this, this edge router. And here also, I am going to create one tunnel. Interface tunnel, let's say 1. And then tunnel source is of a serial 0 by 0 by 0. Then tunnel destination tunnel destination is 100.1.1.1 see this two public IP address means 100.1.1.1 and 101.1.1.1 are reachable with each other through internet because those both are public IP address okay and then I am going to say uh, IP address on this tunnel interface is 172.16.1.2 here 255.255.255.252 and now let me check the connectivity between these two tunnel interface on router number one and router number two ping 172.16.1.1 yes i am able to ping you can see i am able to ping because when i am pinging this ip address this router will check the routing table so ip route and in the routing table yes one network is available for this submit 172.16.0.0 slash 16 and uh, you can see 172.16.1.0 slash 30 is directly connected on tunnel interface and whenever exit interface is tunnel interface it will encapsulate the GRE header and it will add one external IP header in external IP header source will be 101.1.1 tunnel source IP address and destination will be 100.1.1.1 tunnel destination IP address right and it will forward from the tunnel interface miss from the physical interface real 0 by 0 by 0 okay and now on this tunnel interface we can configure any routing protocol to exchange prefixes like i want to you know advertise 10 prefixes in this side and i want to advertise these three prefix 192.168.10.0 and 30.0 in this side so we can configure uh, any protocol any routing protocol on tunnel interface so like we have already ospf configuration on this router and i am able to ping the remote tunnel IP address like 172.16.1.2 right so we can configure we can enable OSPF on tunnel interface also let me enable it see how router OSPF I am running router OSPF process 1 in this OSPF process I am going to advertise one more network 172.16.1.1.0.0.0 area 0 Okay, when I will configure OSPF on this side, what will happen? OSPF never see will come up on tunnel interface. So let me access this router again. On this router also, I am going to configure OSPF. Because here we are not running any routing protocol till now. So let me enable router OSPF, router OSPF process 1. Then I am going to advertise network. 10.1.1.0 0.0.255 area 0 and then I am going to advertise uh, enable OSPF on tunnel interface by running command network 172.16.1.20.0.0 area 0 wait for some time OSPF never see will come up and when OSPF never will come up yes you can see OSPF never has up uh, on tunnel interface and now if you will check routing table so ip route ospf so you can see router 2 have received these all network information these all network information okay these all network information and this distribution layer switch let's say i want to check distribution layer switch one routing table because this router this distribution layer switch should also receive 10 prefixes 10.1.1.0 so, so ip route 
OSPF. Yes, you can see it have received this network 172.16.1.0. And now let me check this PC is able to ping HTTP server, which is located in different network ping 10.1.1.30. So wait for some time you will see this PC can ping 10.1.1.30 and this is how these two sites are able to communicate with each other destination host unreachable I'm getting this error wait for some time what is the issue I'm getting reply from 100.1.1.2 100.1.1.2 from this IP address guys this is I think problem of packet tracer because here configuration is correct everything is fine here we don't have any problem because both router have roots so these uh, end devices can communicate with each other like side 1 and side 2 should be able to ping now distribution layer switch to ping let me do one thing ping from here I am going to ping and this router let me check routing table of this router also here OSPF neighborship is also flapping right because of this is definitely problem of packet tracer only process 100.1.1.1 tunnel full to down this is problem of packet tracer only so IP route OSPF yes we don't have any rot after some time again we will receive the rot because OSPF neighborship is flapping this is because of packet tracer router maybe 100% I am 100% sure that this is because of packet tracer but in real time configuration is exactly same guys this is how you configure NAT this is how you configure VPN this is how your two sites are connected with each other this is how two sites are communicating with each other our public network this is how sites are able to you know you are able to access internet everything so this is basic configuration if you uh, you have uh, you are working in an organization who have let's say two to three branches so definitely they are using this method only to connect all branch together okay so this is all for today uh, if you have learned something from this video guys please hit on like button if you have not subscribed the channel please subscribe the channel we will meet soon in next video till then stay safe bye bye thanks for watching that's all for today